Now this doesn't look very much like a MacBook because it's actually the Latte Panda Alpha. But in terms of the actual hardware on this thing, it is nearly identical to the 2015 MacBook. So it's got a dual core Intel processor, eight gigs of RAM, and what's very interesting is that it has two PCI Express expansion slots on it. So we're gonna be using one of those for storage and the other to simulate what it would be like if you could hook a Titan RTX graphics card up to a 2015 MacBook. Bottleneck City, here we come. Oh yeah. Oh, speaking of bottlenecks, this segue was bottlenecked by me not remembering who the sponsor is. Ruggable rugs are machine washable, spill and stain resistant, and they're non-toxic. They're great for protecting your hardwood floors, and with code FUNLINUS15, you can get 15% off your order and free shipping at the link below. They're available in the US and Canada. Now, the Latte Panda Alpha is more than just you know, the original MacBook on a single PCB here. In fact, it's not intended for what we're gonna be using it for today at all. Do you wanna walk us through some of the things that make this particular device kind of special here? Well, I don't know, I guess there's only really two things. It's really small and there's an Arduino right here, along with RS, what is it, 232, and just a bunch of general input-output stuff. So what this is, is effectively like the same kind of computer as uh, uh, something like a Raspberry Pi, where everything is very, very embedded. So there's your micro ST expansion, there's your display output with a little, nice little ribbon cable there and all that good stuff, except it is way more powerful. So this thing runs a Core M3 7Y30 CPU, like I said before, eight gigs of RAM, and there it is on the back the magic special sauce we're gonna be using today, the dual M.2 adapters. In terms of the rest of the IO, we've got touch interface for the display, Intel wireless over here. Nice, got that RJ45 ethernet. This HDMI port can do up to 4K60, which is really nice to see. We've also got a headphone jack, USB type C, and over on the other side, three USB 3 type A's. Cooling is taken care of by this heatsink fan up here, and that's pretty much it. So we can go ahead and, uh, Get this thing set up on our box test bench here, shall we? Yeah, sounds good to me. What, what you doing? Yes, we have the same shirt on. Do, do we want to address that or just keep going? LTTstore.com. Oh, that's the good stuff right there literally costs more than 2x the entire rest of the computer, literally. So, let's see here. This is my old nemesis, the oh, EXP GDC is, Beast. That thing's back? Yeah, this thing's back. We I'm, had so much trouble with this thing the first time we tried to do a project with it. And by we, I mean Alex. Yeah, it turns out that Although it uses an M.2 adapter, the signal's kind of crap, so depending on what laptop you put it in and how long the traces are between the M.2 key and the CPU, it can just not work sometimes for no reason. Okay, so we want to use our M.2 key M for our graphics card, is that correct? Yeah, and so this is where the keen among you have probably realized that we have a bit of an issue, because that it's not an M.2 key. Or it is an M.2 key. Uh, it, yeah. But it's not an M key. It's not an M key. Yeah, it's an M.2 key E. So anything that you would want to put in there, basically, you can't. The main difference between a key M and a key E M.2 is actually the number of, well, aside from the number of PCI Express lanes, the position of the notch. So there's a notch right here to ensure that you don't plug the wrong thing into the wrong slot. And the key E, ah, so the notch is way over here. Now key M is intended for things like NVMe storage, and in this case, uh, our adapter to this PCI Express 16X slot, which should theoretically now have uh, 4X worth of bandwidth. Key E is generally used for like Wi-Fi cards. So obviously we're not gonna have any storage if we don't find a way to put an SSD in here. There actually are 32 gigabytes of storage on the Latte Panda, but oh. 
that's enough, not enough for like a game or anything. Right. So. Oh, well we could have just plugged an external drive in and run our Steam library off that. That would have been slow. No, that would have been perfectly fast. You mean we waited around for this adapter for nothing? I didn't know it had storage on it. It has storage on it. <laughs> well, speaking of waiting around, we had to wait around because like, you'd think that this would work. It's a Wi-Fi adapter to PCI slot thing. So yeah. you use that, you use this guy right here, plug it in like so, you'd think it would work. But? It just doesn't. Okay, cool. Which is why we need this right here. Did you just like stash pieces of this project all over the room? Yes. All right, so this is from Syntec Electronic Co. Limited, and it appears to be an E key to M key adapter. This is definitely increasing the bulk of our solution a little bit, but if it works, then I'll be, I'll be pretty pleased. Curiously, even though Latte Panda has a key E here, which normally is actually used with short cards like this one, they don't actually have like a mounting spot for it. They've got an 80 millimeter mounting spot, just like if you were to plug in an SSD. What were they thinking? Um, I just turned it over and figured that gravity would keep it in. Good guy, gravity. <laughs> all right, so now that we've got our single board computer, our unnecessary storage, and our PCI Express slot, all that we need to do now is plug in our 330 watt power brick to the beast here. Look at this thing. It's awesome. So then we get power for our car. Yeah, have you noticed a problem here? Yeah, we need two eight pins. Yeah. Let me guess, you stashed it in a drawer somewhere. Oh, do you wanna know where it is? Can you find it? Okay. Um, not in the banana cup. Not in there. No. Nope. You're like way off. We can play hot and cold if you want. You're getting hotter, much hotter. A bit hotter. You know. So it. you're getting colder now. You're getting colder. In your pocket? No, maybe? it's not a Okay, you're you're like pretty close. That's no you're you're colder now. Do you want me to just get it for you? This is painful. Yeah. Oh, we need a second power <laughs> supply. Yeah, we have a whole power supply. So then, can I summarize for the people at home now? Yep. We've got the single board computer with the E key to M key adapter for the unnecessary storage. We've got the M key to PCI Express slot adapter for our Titan RTX. Now the beast down here is powered by this Dell power brick, and then the plugs at the top of the card are handled by this Seasonic Prime Gold power supply. 850 watts. Now we can turn it on? Well, that's not plugged in, but. Other than that, yeah. we can turn it on. <laughs> Type C power. And I'm assuming this is the power button here. Yep. Hey, there we go. Nice. Okay, so now it's just time for gaming? Yeah. You know what? I don't see anything wrong in the menus so far. Yeah, it's going not bad. Everything here seems fine. I'll just hit R and go. The, uh, the fan's definitely ramping up though. Yeah, so you might have noticed that we have a ping pong table over here. Yeah, I did. Uh, that's because the loading times are absolutely atrocious. So we're supposed to play games while we wait for our video games. Yeah, there's no point in like just sitting in front of it. Like, Now my understanding is you're actually pretty good at ping pong. I'm like not bad. Oh, nice shot. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, it's loaded. Now that's actually not that bad. Yeah. It's not great. I was running these settings on an RTX 2080 mobile with a mobile Core i9, and I was getting about anywhere from double to triple that. This part's not bad. With fewer people in the scene, it's actually keeping up a little bit better. The part that I'm more concerned about is you can see some real stutters like that Oof. one. <laughs> like, it says 50, but it's like. The it's frame not. times are not necessarily yeah. keeping up here. Yeah, it gets pretty hot. Yeah, it actually smells hot. You know, like the smell of hot electronics? Not really. So technically we got a benchmark score there, uh, but I get the feeling that this is kind of where the system <laughs> wasn't running properly. <laughs> okay, we're gonna call that a fail. Oh wow, our CPU was pinned at 100% the whole time. 
Yeah. Holy banana sacks. Okay, wanna go ahead and uh, fire up game number two? All right, well, we have City Skylines here. This is a traditionally- That's an even more CPU intensive. Yeah, also RAM. <laughs> what are you trying to do to this poor thing? We're pushing its limits, you could say. City's on the brink of bankruptcy. Accept the bailout? Um, I'd just reject it. Reject the bailout. Yeah, we're already $34 million in the hole, so I don't think there's much coming back. Wow, this is running at crud-tastic <laughs> details. How's it doing? Yeah, about the same as before. Looks like about 10 FPS, 15 FPS. That might have been, oh, that might have been more like 18 or so. Yeah. I've seen worse. But like, it works. Yeah, it does like, work. You could play this. Yeah, it's not a great experience. No. We're definitely not getting the most out of our Titan RTX. Time for our last game. The appropriately named Doom. Okay. Oh, yeah, we can probably play some ping pong. <laughs> no! <laughs> trying to snipe the corner there. I think it's my serve. Well, actually, we just got to the main screen. Wow, that was just launching the game. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. So we're Vulcan Ultra 1440p. Hey, that looks better. This is actually not that bad. Now it's not great, to be clear. And you can also really see like the GPU serving frames about every three to four milliseconds and the CPUs taking about every 20 or so. So that is what is known as a severe CPU bottleneck. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty confident that if we put like a 1060 into this, that performance is gonna be exactly the same. Low ammo. Yes, glory kill, bad. Like this, this is actually quite playable. So given how bottlenecked we are, I guess that's the point of this then. Yeah, I'm very confident that we'll get the same performance with a 1060 as we did with the Titan. So we were looking at about 50 to 60 frames per second in that level of doom. So why don't we fire it up with a GTX 1060 and see if we're looking about the same. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Fire it up. Yeah. I mean, is now a good opportunity to talk about what this is actually for? Sure. I made this because it's the first sensor that I could find. There we go. And I think it's just running right now. So. Back to what I said earlier. What have you had to eat today? Uh, I had a uh, Subway sandwich and a uh, crepe this morning. Hmm. So I have built a fart detector. So this light right here turns on when this detects methane gas. Fascinating. <laughs> so is the main benefit of this then that you can program your Arduino on the machine that also contains your Arduino? Yeah, and I think it would be really useful if you're doing like IoT stuff and you just had your Arduino like stuffed behind a mirror or something in your house and you could just have ethernet going to it and then you could change everything right on your little computer from far away. Now the intent was to use this in the bathroom, right? But it's not sensitive enough? Yeah, so we wanted to make the bathroom that never smells. So instead of turning a light on, like on a breadboard, it would turn it on outside of the bathroom and turn the fans on so you'd know like someone really dropped a bomb in there. Yeah. But the problem is that methane, only about 50% of people really produce it when they flatulate. So you want, what is it? Um, dihydrogen oxide or dihydrogen sulfide, there we go. Which it turns out is really hard to get sensitive sensors for. Got it. That are like cheap. So it would have been like two grand or something dumb like that. Is that worth it? I don't know, maybe. Like. I have definitely like walked into the bathroom and it's some unfortunate times recently, so. And there we are. We're running at anywhere from 50 to 60 frames per second, exactly the same as we were on the RTX Titan. <laughs> That's pretty brutal. So that, my friends, is what a CPU bottleneck looks like. You install a graphics card that's literally half the performance and you get zero change in FPS. So all that's left for this video then is to light up that blue light. <laughs> is it weird to message the group chat if anyone like has gas today? Yes. But I think that if you acknowledge that it's weird, it's fine. Okay. All right, well, no one heeded our call. So it also detects propane and butane. So we're just gonna blow some gas at it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>
So if you guys are into <laughs> this kind of like uh, IoT maker stuff, we actually have a really cool video coming on Pi Hole, which is a way of using a Raspberry Pi as a better than a normal ad blocker ad blocker. So uh, make sure you're subscribed. Speaking of being subscribed, if you're subscribed to this channel, this segue probably won't surprise you at all. Our sponsor today is Pulseway. Pulseway is the real-time monitoring and management software that helps you fix problems on the go by sending commands from any mobile device. It's compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux, and Pulseway's single app gives you remote desktop functionality, gives you access to real-time status, system resources, logged in users, network performance, Windows updates, and more. You can even create and deploy custom scripts to automate your IT tasks, and you can scan, install, and update all your systems on the go. So try it for free at pulseway.com or go through our link in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video tickled your fancy, we ran an RTX 2080 Ti on an Intel Skull Trail. You can check out that video, but uh, otherwise, bye.